Hi, welcome to Matter and Energy Part 2. My name is Dr. English. In this video, we're going to be talking about pure substances, mixtures, and separation techniques. Specifically, the law of conservation of matter, one more time. Pure substances, specifically elements and compounds. Homogeneous mixtures. Heterogeneous mixtures. Physical separation of mixture techniques. And finally, looking at some specific ones, filtration, distillation, and chromatography. So let's talk about the law of conservation of matter. And basically it says that matter is neither created nor destroyed in any process. So we've looked at the law of conservation of mass, which we've seen with balanced chemical equations. We've seen the law of conservation of charge in redox, and now we're talking about the law of conservation of matter. So the first thing that we're gonna look at is the definition of a substance. So a pure substance refers to any particular variety of matter that always has the same chemical and physical properties throughout. So all the same, no impurities at all. So something like pure metal, like this image of strontium metal that we have here, a pure nonmetal like sulfur, or a pure compound like this sample of copper two sulfate. All of these would be considered pure substances. The category of pure substances can be broken down into two components, elements and compounds. So let's review the definition of an element. An element consists of atoms with the same atomic number. Now if you remember from atomic structure, atomic number will always equal the number of protons. And as long as the number of protons in the nucleus remains the same from atom to atom, you'll have that particular element. Elements cannot cannot be broken down into simpler parts by a chemical change. So here we have some examples of different types of elements. We have manganese here, antimony, and liquid bromine. This would be a particle diagram of pure substance as an element in the solid phase. We can see how the atoms are all closely placed together. They're in some type of uniform pattern. So this again is showing a particle diagram of an element in the solid phase. Now let's talk about the other pure substance, compounds. Compounds consist of two or more different elements, different elements chemically bonded in a fixed proportion. Now you might be saying, well, what do you mean by fixed proportion? Well, let's just take the formula for water. So water is H2O. This is in a fixed proportion. This basically means that for every two hydrogens, I'm going to have one oxygen, and that can't change. If I change that ratio, I'm changing my compound. Or another example could be, I don't know, lithium chloride, LiCl. Li and Cl are in a one-to-one -one fixed proportion. If I change that, I no longer have that compound. So that's what they mean by fixed proportion. Another thing to remember about compounds is that the physical and chemical properties of a compound are going to be different from the properties of the elements from which they're made. Classic example is sodium chloride. We know that sodium chloride is composed of sodium metal, which is a very reactive metal, and chlorine gas, which is Cl2, which if you breathe it in can be very detrimental to your health. But when these two elements react together and they form the compound NaCl or sodium chloride, we form something like we see in this image over here that you can sprinkle on your french fries. So we look at a compound and we have to remember that the elements that make up that compound behave very differently than the compound that they form. Compounds can also be broken down into other substances by a chemical change, such as the addition of heat or electricity, which we know as electrolysis. So compounds most definitely can be broken down into simpler substances. A great example would be water. When water undergoes electrolysis, and forms hydrogen gas and oxygen gas, and we can see that right here. So here's our water. We add electricity and we can form hydrogen gas and oxygen gas through electrolysis. That's an example of a compound being broken down into its original elements. Now let's talk about mixture. A mixture of pure substances, elements, or compounds with different chemical and physical properties that can be separated by physical means such as distillation, 
filtration, or chromatography. So when we think about mixtures, mixtures mean, basically means it's something that we make that we can separate back into its original elements or compounds by a certain separation technique. So the first type of mixture that we need to be familiar with is something known as a homogeneous mixture, otherwise known as a solution. This is a mixture that does not contain visibly different parts, so it's going to look the same throughout. One image that always comes to mind for me is when you make Kool-Aid. Okay, Kool-Aid is made up of a bunch of different parts, so I can have basically my powder and my water coming together, making a solution, and it looks the same throughout. So it's going to have the same chemical and physical properties throughout. And I have two more examples down here. If you ignore the very large shark here, we have salt water. And salt water is a homogeneous mixture of different ions. Not just sodium and chlorine, but other particles like fluorine and potassium, all sorts of different ions and particles that make up salt water. Air is also a homogeneous mixture. I know it's hard to think about it that way, but we want the atmosphere that we live in to be a homogeneous mixture. We don't want to be walking around when there's a, you know, a pocket of oxygen and, oh, hey, we can breathe. And then we walk into a pocket of nitrogen and all of a sudden it's like, <gasps> and you know, you're dead. So we want the, the molecules that make up our air to be evenly distributed out so we can exist. Another type of homogeneous mixture is an alloy, and we see alloys as a mixture, a homogeneous mixture of metals. So when metals are mixed together uh, and then have a uniform composition throughout, those are known as alloys. Here's a particle diagram of a homogeneous mixture of elements in the solid phase. Notice in this diagram, the diagram is recognized as homogeneous as the particles are evenly distributed throughout the solid. So when I'm looking at this particular diagram, I know that this is homogeneous because I can see a pretty good pattern, a pattern among these different circles here that's showing me it's evenly spread throughout. So this is a good representation of a homogeneous mixture. And I know it's a mixture of two different types of elements because they're not overlapping. We're not forming compounds here. This is just a mixture of two elements. A heterogeneous mixture, on the other hand, is a mixture that has visibly different parts, has different chemical and physical properties that remain separate from each other. So examples of this might be iron filings mixed with sulfur. So this image right here. I have two different elements mixed together, but if I have a magnet, I can separate the two of them. Another example that you might have in your house is something like Italian dressing, where we can see basically right here the separation between these two liquids coming together. Same thing over here when we see oil and water. We can see that these two substances are not going to mix together and they are separate from each other. Particle diagram of a heterogeneous mixture of elements in the liquid phase. So notice in this diagram, the diagram is recognized as heterogeneous as the particles are distributed in two distinct layers in the liquid. So I have a layer up at the top that's composed of one type of element, the blue spheres, and a layer on the bottom that is composed of a different type of element, the white spheres. So that in itself shows me that this is a heterogeneous mixture. I might be able to shake them up together for a moment, and for a moment they might look like they're combining together, but if I set them down, over time they will separate back into those two distinct layers. Physical separation of mixtures. Differences in the following physical properties permit physical separation of the component parts. In order to physically separate a mixture, we might look at the density of the particles involved, the particle size, molecular polarity, boiling point, freezing point, or the solubility of the components. One example of physical separation is filtration. So separation of a heterogeneous mixture on the basis of particle size. So maybe in here we have a mixture of sand and water and we want to separate the two. So the sand would get trapped in the filter paper and the water would go through the filter paper into the funnel down into the beaker. Next we have distillation. 
separation of homogeneous mixtures based on differences in boiling points. So here is our setup right here. Distillation is a process of boiling a liquid and condensing and collecting the vapor. The liquid collected is called the distillate. The usual purpose of distillation is purification or separation of the components of a mixture. This is possible because the composition of the vapor is usually different from that of the liquid mixture from which it's obtained. Gasoline, kerosene, fuel oil, and lubricating oil are produced from petroleum by distillation. Finally, we have chromatography. The differing abilities of substances to adhere to the surfaces of various solids, such as paper and starch, can also be used to separate homogeneous mixtures, such as ink. I can take an overhead pen, put it on a piece of chromatography paper, put it in a chromatography solvent, and basically be able to pull out the different colors that make up that black overhead marker. And it's pretty cool, and it's, a lot of it is dependent on molecular polarity. So what did we learn in this tutorial? We talked about the law of conservation of matter. We looked at pure substances, such as elements and compounds. We talked about homogeneous mixtures and heterogeneous mixtures and how to recognize them using particle diagrams, physical separation of mixture techniques, and then we focused a little bit on filtration, distillation, and chromatography. Need more help? Feel free to contact me. Have a great day.